Yes. What's this to the left? Oh my god, what is that? Oh god. Ooh. So, why are we doing this? Well, this all started because we wanted to know where the stories come from. Proctor Valley Road, where people claim to have seen all sorts of spooky sightings. To help us sort through what's real and what's not, we caught up with two paranormal researchers. One grew up here in San Diego. There's a lot of fascinating stories out there. Meet Derek Acosta. Ah! and Johnny Weiss. We realized we had a shared love for uh, cryptids and the paranormal. They're also hosts of a popular podcast. I think we've talked about every cryptid ever. Even if the monsters and the ghosts and the paranormal aspect isn't necessarily real, the people are real. So Make a Strange is a podcast that focuses on those stories and anything strange. We asked them to meet us out on Proctor Valley Road. Here we are, top of Proctor Valley Road. Give me what we know so far. So when we go down there, it's gonna be a tiny road. There's not gonna be any lights, it's gonna be pitch black, and they say that there are ghosts, or some people say ghouls, they don't know what they are. <laughs> I don't know how I got picked for this assignment. <laughs> <laughs> Can we make it sound scarier? So Proctor Valley Road is essentially a dirt path about five miles long. It connects East Lake and Hamul. The legends date back decades. This sign marks the entrance to the road. It's a natural resource area, which sounds really nice. It wasn't. Yeah, and I believe there's a lake nearby. Some graffiti here. I guess the monster was out here tagging his territory. Are you guys spooked yet? Well, I thought I just heard like some sort of cry faintly off in the distance. We did see some lights down the road, so maybe those are the phantom lights. So according to Johnny and Derek, two of the most popular Proctor Valley urban legends include the Proctor Valley monster, we'll get to him in a second, and also the haunted or phantom headlights, which according to the legend will run you off the road. You guys see that? Who would be out here at night? Who's, who's out here and what are they doing? At this point, I'm a little spooked. Let's go with spooky level three. But thankfully for us, these bizarre lights turned out to be some nighttime hikers. Oh, it curves. How are you guys holding up? Yeah, we're doing good. The, the road is smoothed out a little bit here. The next bizarre thing we came across. What's this to the left? Oh my God, what is that? Yeah, what is that? Oh God. This bone dry abandoned boat. Nowhere near water and we have this. Makes you wonder. <laughs> Weird boat, mm, spooky level two. More questions than answers, we keep it moving. All right, so where are we off to next? We're gonna go find that haunted tree. So according to the legend, and every city has this story, some young lovers came down here. Maybe the car broke down, maybe it ran out of gas. We don't really know the details, but for whatever reason, the boyfriend stepped out of the car and vanished. And when she finally got out of the car, she found her missing boyfriend suspended from the branches of this tree. Okay, hold up, hang on. This is the part of the night where we decide we should probably do some fact checking. So we reached out to a history expert at a South Bay museum. The origin of the Proctor Valley monster that we know of is around 1947. Wendy Wilson, the executive director of the Bonita Museum and Cultural Center. Tell me about this, this is a footprint. So you can tell from the footprint the size, maybe the size of the monster. She says the whole Proctor Valley monster urban legend started with two middle school boys who lived on dairy farms nearby in the late 1940s. She says they came across a dead calf on the road 
and started spreading a rumor about a monster. They went back to their middle school and spread the rumor. They went to the Bonita store. They went everywhere. It's almost like these stories have grown from the initial story. And now they encompass bright lights and chupacabras. As far as historical evidence goes for the other Proctor Valley tall tales. I don't have any specific proof that anything else has really happened on this road. It's more of a feeling. When people come in, they'll say they, they have a feeling when they go on Proctor Valley Road, and it's an eerie feeling. We continue our journey. You can see how this would actually be pretty in the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's be a nice spot for a hike. <laughs> Next, what do you see over there? Oh, keep out. <laughs> we find this ominous sign full of bullet holes. I think this is a jawbone. Really? Hold on. Oh, shut up. <laughs> oh, here's the wall. No oh, way. My Where? God. Yeah, that's teeth. My question is who's finding animal skulls and just placing yeah. them on the trail? That is the question. <laughs> uh, it may be the Proctor Valley monster, hopefully. So what happens next is by far the scariest thing that happens all night. What's going on? What's happening? We see a pair of headlights coming towards us. It's a white pickup truck that pulls up, stops next to our car. A man gets out, his face is covered, and he has a gun on his head. So he starts talking to my photographer, Ray, and I'm thinking, this is it. This is how we go. We're done for. Story about how we're both with the news. So. Anywhere with Border Patrol? Yeah. Don't worry, you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> it was Border Patrol. So, between that, the bones, and the bullet holes, spooky level 10. I have decided I've had enough Proctor Valley Road for the night. While our Proctor Valley story ends here, the legends, of course, live on. You know, in my opinion, I think that there are certain places all over the world that have a vibe or an energy to them. This is not something I would ever do. And I do think that there's like a common shared experience that people have where they can look at one another and agree like, this is spooky, right? And so maybe that's what it's all about. The shared experience of being spooked. I think we could convince ourselves that there's nothing creepy going on in this, these places, but it's more fun to leave the door open of maybe, maybe it's true. With photojournalist Ray Higgins, <laughs> Madison Weil, ABC 10 News.